They were celebrating a birthday today. One of the boys, turning 12. They celebrate as a family. They are a family. This was a feast. Rice, chicken, Coca-Cola, Inca-Cola. Little children, no different than little children in America, no different than my own. They strategize for the week. Charlene and Kathy talk about the clinic. The translators we had hired for the week, Fernando and Liliana. The next morning, Charlene and Kathy headed out to the orphanage to set up the clinic. They approach the orphanage. High concrete walls, barbed wire, heavy metal door. The children, they peek outside the door. Is it safe? So when we got to the, the clinic, uh, they gave us a room and we uh, set up um, as best we could and we began to see, see patients. And our goal was to um, see all the Shama children in the orphanage. That was our, our main goal, to bring them um, medicine and vitamins and um, things to kill lice and parasites and things that they may deal with coming straight off of the streets, coming into the orphanage. So we were able to see all the Shama children. However, um, Francis, the director, wanted us not only to see the Shama children, but to see the children who were associated with the school from the community. So we began to see children quicker and um, really assess them. We got very efficient with what we were doing and we were able to see many, many of the children from the community, which was exciting. Um, some of the children had very uh, few health problems and others we we saw some sad things. They were dealing with sexually, very young, eight-year-olds, 10-year-olds, dealing with sexually transmitted diseases, um, lots of gum disease, Kathy was seeing. Um, and there was a, a pretty big spectrum of um, very poor health to um, good health that we were looking at. Frances was really pleased that we were able to see some of the kids from the school and the community. Um, she also wanted us to go in and teach some classes on health issues. And so both Kathy and I, um, we saw two classes and we, we spoke to them about dental care and I did first aid and um, some about choking. And so that went well. She was very pleased and it, it brought the Shama Center in a good, better standing with the community. And that was definitely one of our goals to, so that the community would support um, and feel positive about what Shama was doing. And this other day, Violeta was telling me about Ken's story and she was telling me that um, Ken's mother is a prostitute and she has three or four kids and each kid is uh, from different guys, from different people. Um, well, Ken's father is Korean and she had her baby while she was living in this uh, house with different prostitutes and he even was prostituted until he was 10 years old and when he arrived to the orphanage he arrived with syphilis and he doesn't like to talk about it because like, it's embarrassing for him of course. One of the men from the orphanage, Jorge, took us to a neighboring town to meet some of the people, to see the homes they live in. We drove up the steep mountain. 
It's just amazing that people could live in these conditions. But this was everyday life for them. These are their homes. These are the homes they live in. The people were very cordial. This home was made of cardboard siding, corrugated metal roof, and a poured concrete floor. The people were so friendly, so welcoming. Warning us the dog bites. She invited us into her home. These are a proud people. Como se llama? Miguel. Hola, Miguel. Como se llama? Five people live in this house. Como se llama? David. Hola. The bedrooms. Outdoor kitchen on the left. The bathroom on the right. The laundry room. The washing machines are there in the orange. We're offered candy. Ah, no, it's for you. It's for you. This is their home. This is normal for them. It's hard to imagine five people living in this house. Poured concrete floor. Houses built on steep hills. And children playing. It's so hard for me to wrap my mind around this. <laughs> the playscape. The family pet in the pet's doghouse. 